Top of the morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence, and the WHOW Morning Show streams to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your peak and insurance agent in Clinton. My guest in this segment of the show today is Joey Long, director of the DeWay County Museum. Good morning, Joey. How are you today? I'm great, Seth. Good morning. Yeah, thanks for joining us. It's good to have you on the program as always. And Joey, I cannot believe it, but we are a month away from the Apple and Pork Festival. The next time you and I catch up, we will, I believe, well, I don't know. I don't think we'll be on the eve of the Apple and Pork Festival. I think we'll be the week before. But nonetheless, we are closing in on the 2023 edition of the Apple and Pork Festival. How are things going, Joey? How are you doing with everything? is going quite well um you know as you know we start working on this and planning in january and it continues the whole year but um doing very well as far as planning things um maybe shifting things here and there where needed everything's on track board just met the other night and everything looks good um i am happy to announce that uh, even though we added additional flea market spaces this year um we are sold out. Sold out of flea market space. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, we've come quite close in the last 10 years to selling out, but completely sold out at this point. And it's it's quite early for that. So um, really excited about that. And I hope that everybody comes out and see what I guess I can say is the largest festival flea market we've had as far as the number of dealers and the number of booth spaces. So we're really looking forward to that, be a lot of new things and new people. And I hope that all those vendors do quite well and and come back to us next year. So we're on track. Things are going well. What do you attribute the interest in right now, Joey? What what has people so interested in being a vendor at the Apple and Pork Festival, or uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, in the flea market of the Apple and Pork Festival? We are hearing a lot of people say we did so well last year, we're coming back. So, you know, we didn't have the festival in 2020. Then we were able to come back in 2021. Um, You know, we had a great crowd for that, right? And we heard a lot of wonderful things from the people set up at the flea market that they, you know, were just blown away by the sales, blown away by the crowd. You know, (laughs) the new ones were not expecting anything like that. So, you know, of course, they're sure to, you know, come back the next years. But then, you know, word gets around these people, you know, they set up at different flea markets all over. You know, they're kind of like their own community, right? And so, really, it's the word of mouth um, from one vendor to another to another that really helps us out a lot. So, um, we've had quite a few new vendors come. We even added some additional spaces to accommodate this. And, um, yeah, it just worked out really well. Well, Joey, uh, with the Apple and Pork Festival conversation, we continue on because I know it is the time of year for the Parade of Pigs and Trees. So how about this? That's right. So the Parade of Pigs is coming back. Um, Also, in this case, Seth, we've increased our numbers. So in past years, it had always been 20 pigs, so 20 entries for the contest. And... You know, we always say that you can pick your pigs up during this window of time or until there are no pigs left. And we were always running out of pigs, just, you know, a couple, two or three days into it. And, you know, would have people be a little disappointed that the pigs were all gone. So we added this year. So this year we're actually going to be having 25 pigs due to popular demand. And this year the pigs can be picked up at the museum August 23rd through August 27th, or like I said, until we run out, and that's during regular museum hours. So the regular museum hours, when you can come and pick up a pig from August 23rd to August 27th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday, or 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. 
Very good. So uh, put that uh, on the radar as that will uh, come up and, and pass very quickly, and those will go fast, I'm sure. This is a pretty popular uh, part of the Apple and Pork Festival, Joey, but something we don't really, I, I feel like, give as much uh, credit, or not credit, but maybe a conversation as perhaps it's due. Yeah, it is. It's quite popular. Um, and we, you know, we answer phone calls, people not interested in entering the Parade of Pigs contest, but people will call, you know, a week or two before the festival and ask if we're going to have the contest again. You always see people gathered there, you know, looking at all the pigs. They enjoy the creativity and the artistic talent that goes into it. So, yeah, it's just a very popular thing. And then, of course, you know, in the end, somebody goes home being the grand champion. So grand champion it will be awarded a blue ribbon and $50 and the reserve champion will be awarded $25. So a little incentive there. Yeah. Bragging rights and a little bit of cash. And I'll also mention in years past, there has always been a $5 registration fee to enter the contest that just helps pay for the prize money and, and the other expenses, you know, involved in putting this together. But this year, a generous donor um, was kind enough to pay the registration fee for everyone who comes and picks up a pig this year. So you don't have to bring that $5 with you. All you have to do is come and pick up your pig. Very good. Now, how do you encourage folks to decorate these? I'm, and I, you probably get, I don't know if you get the same participants year after year, but probably most folks know. But how about this, Joey, um, you know, for maybe folks that are new to the uh, parade of pigs, how do you encourage them to decorate their pigs? Oh, yeah, that's a great thing to talk about here. So uh, each pig is a plywood cutout pig. Every pig has been primed with paint primer. So you have a blank slate to work with. And then the only real requirements are that whatever you use to decorate your pig, be that, you know, paint or fabric or, you know, whatever you're doing, it would need, of course, to be something that would hold up to the elements outside because they will be exposed to the weather hanging on the fence for quite a few days. Um, anything that you attach to your pig needs to be attached firmly. You know, we don't want them falling apart or pieces of your pig blowing away. Um, other than that, not much in the way of, uh, you know, rules and regulations. We do have, you know, a policy that we ask that there be no political themes, that the pigs not be used to strictly to advertise your business so there are no commercial entries um but it's really just it's a great thing for people to do we have people that do you know normally get a pig each year um but we always have new ones every year as well it's a nice family activity we have a lot of families that will come in and claim a pig and decorate the pig um we have local nonprofits that do the same artists um, it's just a lot of fun, just a lot of fun. So if anyone's considering taking part in this, I highly encourage them to do so. Joey, again, just remind us when and where they can pick up their pigs. They can pick up their pig at the CH Moore Homestead DeWitt County Museum, August 23rd to 27th during regular museum hours. I also want to add, you don't have to be a DeWitt County resident to do this. Last year, we had people that drove down from Bloomington, drove over from Lincoln. Um, you know, anyone who loves the festival is encouraged to take part. Very good. Joey Long, director of the DeWitt County Museum, our guest on the phone here for this morning. Joey, let's wrap up the first segment of our conversation. You need volunteers for the Apple and Pork Festival. Lay out your situation for us. We really do. So the only way that we are able to put on this festival is with volunteer help. The museum itself, we have the mansion that we open for tours on both days. So we need docents for that, that particular thing. Uh, we also have several food stands that are operated by the museum. So we need people who would be interested in setting up the stands, interested in preparing food, interested in serving food, um, you know, all of these things that would go along with that. I believe they could probably use some help down in the meal grinding tent, which would be kind of neat. You would, um, you know, learn the old fashioned way of how that was done. So by, by, 
by volunteering, you would not only be helping the museum be able to put on the festival, but you'll also meet some interesting people, maybe learn some neat things that, you know, maybe you wouldn't have been exposed to, you know, like the meal grinding um, or how to cook, you know, an enormous kettle of ham and beans over a big open fire. Uh, it could be a great experience. So if anyone out there is interested in possibly volunteering at the museum, I would encourage them to please, please, please don't hesitate to give me a call at the museum. And we will be happy to find some type of volunteer position that would match your talent, skills, or interests. Sure, sure. Joey, when it comes to volunteering at the museum, I venture a guess that's a great way to get folks introduced to all the operations of the museum at the same time. You know, I, I'm I'm curious if you have found folks that, you know, they, they just thought, hey, you know what, I want to see the Apple and Pork Festival continue. So in years past, they, they gave an hour or two, whether it was, you know, some of the things you're talking about, or maybe there were other aspects of the festival that they've helped out with, whether it's cleanup or upkeep, things like that. Um, and that led them to being more involved in the in the uh, ho- in the uh, in the museum. Sorry, and the homestead. Uh, how about those things, Joey? Have you encountered that in the past? Yes, absolutely. So, um, in fact, four of my house docents a few years ago uh, had four new people that I brought on who were kind enough to you know be a house docent for the first time, and then. Within a year, all four of them had become board members for the DeWitt County Museum Association. So, yeah, some, some, you know, people come in, they volunteer, they enjoy the experience and decide that they want to do more or be, you know, more connected and more involved with the museum. So, yep, it can lead to wonderful things. Very good, Joey. Well, I look at the clock. We could use a timeout. Um, it, with that said, Joey, where do folks go to learn about all things Dewey County Museum, C.H. Moore Homestead, uh, the opportunity to volunteer, get more on the Parade of Pigs, the Apple and Pork Festival? What are all the avenues, Joey? Well, anyone with a direct question is encouraged to give me a call to the museum. That phone number is 217-935-6066. They're always welcome to stop by the museum during regular hours, or they can check out the website. That's www.chmorehomestead.org. They can check out our Facebook pages. There's one for the Apple and Pork Festival, as well as one for the C.H. Moore Homestead DeWitt County Museum. Very good. Joey, let's take that time out here. We'll come back with some more. Joey Long, director of the DeWitt County Museum, C.H. Moore Homestead, is our guest on the phone. More to come with Joey on the WHOW Morning Show. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Ace now offers free assembly and free delivery, so it's never been easier to get a great grill for your family, like a Weber gas grill, a Traeger wood pellet grill, or a big green egg charcoal grill. Only at your neighborhood Ace. Around the block. What you need in stock. With people who know their grills. This is Brad from Gibson Ace Hardware in Clinton, Illinois. Stop in to see us at the helpful place at 114 North Madison Street, Clinton. See participating store for details. There's an internet service that's faster and better than cable, faster and better than wireless, and it's coming to Clinton. Connexus is building a fiber internet network in Clinton with service available later this year. Get local, reliable, affordable, and speed of light fiber internet service from Connexus for just $45 a month for one gig speed your first year and $65 a month thereafter. Get yourself on the install list for gig fiber internet in Clinton by clicking the Connexus icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. Fiber internet is coming to Clinton. Get on the install list now. If you're looking for the latest in local hunting and fishing information, then join us for Central Illinois Outdoors with me, Jared White. Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. and Sundays at 8 a.m. here on WHOW. Every weekend, we'll offer detailed Central Illinois fishing reports from professional guides. We'll swap stories with local celebrity sportsmen, and I'll invite you to share your favorite stories as well. Central Illinois Outdoors with Jared White every weekend on all WHOW platforms and on demand at centralillinoisoutdoors.com. Brought to you by Bob Ridings and Payne the Clinton, Illinois Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau and Locked and Loaded in Pena. Hey, everybody. Buddy Wilson here, your new country financial agent in Clinton. While we can't do anything about insurance industry rate increases, we still offer the best personal service you deserve. 
click on my icon on DeWittDailyNews.com. Connexus will provide local, reliable, affordable, and speed of light fiber internet to Clinton. Get on the install list now by clicking the Connexus icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. Fiber internet is coming to Clinton. Get on the install list now. The trend in Central Illinois. W-H-O-W. Once again, a good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. The WHOW Morning Show streams to Facebook and YouTube, brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. My guest on the phone, Joey Long, director of the DeWitt County Museum and C.H. Moore Homestead. All right, Joey, uh, let's dive into, as we come up on the Labor Day weekend, I can't believe Labor Day is uh, just a few short weekends away, but uh, that is going to be the cutoff for a program that the museum is a part of for veterans. How about this? What's going on, Joey? Yeah, so the C.H. Moore Homestead DeWitt County Museum is very proud to be a Blue Star Museum. And this is a program that I enrolled us in, oh, maybe about five or six years ago. And we've continued our connection with them um, ever since then. We're quite proud to be a Blue Star Museum. Blue Star Museums offer free admission to all active military personnel as well as their families. And this is just a way for us as a museum to be able to thank these people for all they do for us. Um, Have I ever had any active military personnel come in and take advantage of us being a Blue Star Museum? Absolutely. We certainly have. And uh, we're very happy about that. Sure. Do they have to have any sort of identification or anything like that when they come, Joey, to take advantage of that? Yes. And they all do carry identification, you know, so they just show that. And then we thank them for their service and, uh, you know, tell them that they are our guests for that day. No admission and um, give them the royal treatment when they come, you know, try to make it a little special for them. So uh, that kicks off around Memorial Day each year, and then that will end this year, Labor Day weekend. Yep, so that's coming right up, right up around the corner here, uh, Labor Day closely uh, on its way. So you, you, like, what would you say is an average number of those re- uh, of those um, entries, I guess, for a, I, I don't know, a month, a year? Like, what's a, what's a typical number, Joey? Mm, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. I'm sorry. I can't answer that. That's exactly. okay. No, nope, that's all right. Um, say that we have had both. We've had um, just young men maybe traveling from point A to point B and saw that we were a Blue Star Museum, so stopped. And then we've also had situations where it was um, a gentleman who was active military traveling with his family to the museum just to come to the museum as a family, knowing that we were a Blue Star Museum. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very good. So uh, they just stop in and take advantage of that then, it sounds like. Yes, I'm very glad that they do. And easy enough. It's not uh, not too difficult at all. So uh, be a part of that if you are a uh, service member, a veteran, active service member, whatever the case may be. Uh, Joey, let's uh, continue on. And um, by, by the way, anything else on that program I didn't touch on you want to put out there for us? I can't think of anything else, but thank you. Sure, sure. Well, let's, uh, Joey, let's finish up. I know that uh, after the Apple and Pork Festival, you'll have a little bit of downtime in the museum, and you're actively preparing for the Morning More exhibit. We haven't touched on this in, in a bit. So remind us, remind our listeners, what what is Morning More? What are you planning for here, Joey? Yeah, we're very excited about this. So uh, throughout the month of October, the entire mansion will be staged as if those in the house were in mourning and preparing for a funeral. So, you know, the clock will be stopped, funeral wreaths on the doors, the mirrors will be veiled, funeral biscuits on the dining room table, and even a casket in the formal parlor. So there will also be artifacts, garments, photographs, jewelry, um, all sorts of items related to the Victorian era etiquette um, as far as what you would see in the home or traditions that would be followed in the case of having a funeral in mourning. So um, you can enjoy this in one of two ways. So we will be offering the usual daily tours 
tour admission for that is $5 at the door. Your tour begins when you show up. And the narrative will be changed from the normal narrative that we do. The narrative will be the story of C.H. Moore's passing and his funeral, which is actually a very interesting story. And then we also are offering morning more evening candlelight tours on two dates. That would be Saturday, October 14th, as well as Friday, October 27th. Both of those dates, we offer a tour from 6 to 7 or from 7 to 8 p.m. So these special evening tours are admitted by pre-purchase ticket only. So you need to purchase your ticket before the day of the event. And those can be purchased at the museum either by stopping in or we have sold a lot of tickets by people calling in. Um, and we've sold out of town tickets as well. So just give us a call at the museum, select your time and your date, and then we will run your credit card and hold your ticket at the door and it'll be ready for you when you come in. So this is going to be something, you know, a one-time special event. So you don't want to miss this. We won't be doing this next year. Um, so you don't want to miss it. And we do have a limited number of tickets for the evening candlelight tours available. So you don't want to put that off. And then as far as the daily tours, it's um, if you want to book a large group to come and tour, um, you know, as a group, please give me a call at the museum and we can get that scheduled. Very good. So put that on the radar as well. That'll be coming up right after the Apple and Pork Festival. Joey, hate to do this to you. Got to let you go. Thanks for making time for us as always. Joey Long, director of the DeWitt County Museum, our guest. Network News is next. With SRN News, I'm Rich Thomason. The head of